Today we're going to be talking about underwater cinematography or photography for all those photographers out there. Now I'm actually really excited about this video for one reason, well there's a lot of different reasons, but one of the main reasons is there's hardly any information on filming underwater just because it still has been around for a while but it's not talked about a ton within the professional world and non-professional world for that matter. So most people don't know this, but I actually, during the beginning of my YouTube career in 2010, I had the opportunity to film a surf documentary, or it was a documentary on a surf ocean photographer by the name of John Moso. I had the opportunity to go to Hawaii to work on that project for a year, and because I was going to be telling the story on this famous ocean photographer, I wanted to be able to get in the water and capture part of his story. Now, in order to do that, I wanted to make sure I had the best equipment to capture that story that I could be in the ocean be safe with my equipment so I at the time I did not have a budget I did have a 5d mark II at the time and I was like I'm gonna go out there and capture this so I, I kind of asked people around as far as like what's the best underwater housing that I can take a 5d mark II underwater and a guy recommended like, this is the one that I use is about a $200 underwater housing I took that he showed me how to use it I went and I took my 5d mark II under the water for about 10 minutes and it destroyed my camera just like that dramatic music cue so that's my first time destroying a camera and it was salt water so basically what happened is the salt water somehow seeped into the underwater housing and to totally ruin my camera so i was devastated the next day i learned my lesson the hard way the next day the very next day i kid you not no exaggeration here there was going to be some really clear water that day in hawaii on the island of oahu so i was like i got to get out there and capture something so i asked my roommate at the time if i could borrow his 7d and i found someone else with another underwater housing it was about a hundred dollar underwater housing so i went to him i brought his underwater housing he showed me how to use it i did everything correctly within 30 minutes maybe, I'd say give or take. It had leaked, it had destroyed that camera as well. I had to save up money to buy my own camera, another camera, 5D Mark II, and I had to save the money to buy my roommate camera as well. So I actually had to borrow money from several different people to pay that off. It was not ideal, a very awful situation, and a very low point in my life as far as dealing with cameras. I've only destroyed two cameras in my career, and they were both back to back on two days. Essentially Monday and Tuesday, both cameras were destroyed. So I learned something though, with that being said, and the reason why I tell that story is that people are like, well, I'm just gonna buy a cheap underwater housing. It's not worth it. It is not worth it. I've said it twice. I'll say it one more time. It's not worth it. Don't do it. So I learned the hard way. I had to spend money on these cameras. It was not an ideal situation. So then I was like, I can't just ask people. I gotta look everywhere I can to find the best underwater housing. Even if it's out of my budget, it's gonna be worth spending the extra money. So I'd say I spent about two months as I was trying to save money to buy another camera again, doing whatever I could. It took me about two months to find an underwater housing that I thought would be perfect for what I wanted to do. There's a lot of different underwater housings out there for DSLR cameras. The one I decided to go with was an SPL underwater housing. And a quick disclaimer, this is not sponsored or endorsed in any way by anyone I am talking about in this video. So they're not paying me to say this, I am genuinely saying this because this is what I learned from my own personal experience. The SPL underwater housing, this is it right here. If you're wondering where you can get one, go to splwaterhousing.com. You can check them out right there. This is a 5D Mark III underwater housing. At the time I had a 5D Mark II underwater housing. When I left Hawaii, I actually gave that to a friend so they could continue filming and making videos underwater because I didn't think I'd have a need for it. I got to Utah and I realized that I'm filming more underwater outside of Hawaii than I realized. So I got this one to basically meet that need. But this is the underwater housing that I have used. Um, for a very long time. I've used this brand for the last six years for all my DSLR camera needs. And they have different ports. If you're interested in underwater housing, 
go to their website. It's not like your typical pay scale. You basically say what you want as far as this is the lens I want to shoot with, this is the camera I have, and they'll send you an estimate. Just to give you a rough idea of what something like this costs as far as for a 16 to 35 millimeter lens and a Canon DSLR 5D camera, this costs around 17 to 1800 dollars US. So it's definitely a little spendy, but I've had no problems within the last six years of using this brand of underwater housing. Absolutely no leaks. I've actually got hit back and forth on rocks, on the reef, and it still works just fine. So this is what I personally swear by. There's another brand out there that I researched called Icolite. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I think that's another comparable brand. After reading a lot of reviews though, back and forth, I found a lot more people. It was working great for the first year and then it started leaking or they're having other problems with it. So from all my research, this is what I learned was the best underwater housing. A lot of the most famous surf underwater photographers are actually using the same brand as well. So I think they would endorse this as well. So that is why I'm talking so highly about this. Now, let me talk about the technical things with filming with an SPL underwater housing. So once I stick the underwater housing in, and it's fairly easy, I literally just unscrew all of these, just like this, boom, boom, boom pop this off, then I can stick my camera in here and then I just tighten this. Just make sure not to tighten these too tight. I have seen people over crank this and they'll actually crack this entire plate right here or at least where this is and then that will allow water to seep in. So don't go crazy, there's a little suction cup thing right here that you can actually see and as long as you see it pressing really tight against that, you know you're completely safe. So don't go crazy on it. Once my camera is in here, I can actually see the display right here. Once you go underwater and you have a mask on, I wouldn't suggest filming without a mask, but if you do have a mask on, just know that it's gonna be a little hard to actually see your display because there's so many reflections underwater so you're kind of having to slightly guess if you're exposed correctly or not so a lot of times I will turn on auto settings for a lot of my settings now generally speaking if I'm shooting underwater I would say shoot this is my personal preference mind you but I am shooting around a, I'd say about 400 shutter speed and then everything else is essentially at an auto so I'd say usually I'm around 5.6 to somewhere within sometimes f11 as far as iso i usually have it set to automatic so it's kind of basically compensating for everything else that's going on right there um i do not suggest shooting at an open f-stop just because there's so much stuff going on underwater it's hard to have things in focus so just keep that in mind the problems i've run into with this is i'll put my camera in and then i'll forget to turn the camera on before I put it in the underwater housing. Now some underwater housings you can actually turn on your camera. With this exact one that I have, I didn't have that option. So I've seen that with a lot of camera housings. So I actually have to take the camera back out, power on the camera and then put it back in. So just be mindful of that. When I put my camera in here in the lens, I'll turn my lens to autofocus. Now the 5D, it can't do autofocus as far as pulling while you're in video mode. But what you can do is you can turn it to photography mode and then, or videography mode for that matter, and then this right here is giving you access to the button that you can actually record with if you have it set on your camera. And I just hold this halfway down and it will literally pull focus to where I have the center of the camera as far as long as I have that set as well. I'll pull focus to that and then I'll start filming the actual subject. So good example, let's just say I'm filming a turtle where I'm about five feet from the turtle underwater. So I will literally set it to five feet or if I think I'm gonna be around that distance, I'll set it there by holding this halfway where the turtle is, I'll pull focus, the lens will do that, and then I'll keep that distance from the subject the best I can. As long as you're filming at a closed f-stop, most of everything is gonna be in focus. Ever since I've done underwater cinematography, I've always used a Canon 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 lens. It goes back to your preference, but I it's Far easier to film underwater on a wider lens just because you're being pushed all over the place and especially if you're shooting video where things are in motion, you don't want your camera too shaky so the wider the lens, the easier it is that things are going to be in focus and the camera is not going to make people super motion sick compared to if you had a 200 millimeter lens zooming in. You can buy different ports to do that and essentially I could have this one and then I could bring a bunch of other ports and use different lenses. This is the only one that I purchased just because they are a little spendy, so just keep that in mind. So this is what we have used for the last six years. 
but there's also some other great options as well, so I wanted to talk about those. So another great option for filming underwater if you want to go on a budget is this little guy right here. It comes with your GoPro or most GoPro sets and it works great as well. You definitely can't capture the same images with a Canon DSLR camera compared to a GoPro, but as far as like the cheaper version, this does work great. We have filmed a lot of videos with it. The video we just shot in Belize, most of the underwater shots were actually done with a GoPro and then the more kind of cinematic shots in that video where things were going by corals, we were actually using this underwater housing. They cut together really well, but if you are doing a big video that's definitely focused on underwater housing, you're gonna to wanna to have full control of your settings. You can do that with a DSLR camera, so that's why this is still my preference of choice. Now, as far as the RED goes, this is what we use to get any shots with the RED Dragon. So it's not a straight up underwater housing. We've rented those before. Just to buy a straight up underwater housing for RED, you're spending anywhere between 20 and $50,000, if not more. And we're not filming a ton of underwater stuff Stuff right now if we are we just end up shooting it on the DSLR camera but for right now this is a great option if we want to film something with the red and we're gonna be close to the surface level this can take a splash this can go underwater I've taken this about 10 feet underwater without any problems I don't have full control once I take it that deep because of the pressure of the water pushing on the camera in the bag to control all the settings but I have taken it down there without any problems now the way this works is I can literally stick the red straight into the actual underwater housing and then it has this right here that clamps on to all of these little holes and then I can literally put the screen pops out right here red lens goes right there and I can control everything perfectly with this so this runs about a thousand dollars I think a little bit more than that now people may be wondering with well, something like this because there's air in the bag you can actually let that air out with this but it's still going to float so let's just say you get hit by a wave or something happens where you let go of the camera the camera despite it being really heavy is actually going to continue to float so if you want to take this deep down, what we've done is we actually put weights onto this right here. And then after you have about, I'd say about five to 10 pounds somewhere within there, then this starts kind of lowering. Now the ideal world if you're filming underwater, as far as not surface level, but straight up underwater, you want your camera to be buoyant. So it's about putting in the same amount of weights that this camera doesn't actually rise to the top of the surface of the water or sink to the bottom of the ocean. So you kind of have to gauge that once you put it under the water and just kind of get a good feel for it. We took this to several of our trips around the world. We haven't had any issues with it. It's a high quality slash cheap version of not spending like $20,000 on underwater housing. It's hard to spend that much money on a big underwater housing for a red when you're not using it all the time. If we were going to be using it all the time and taking it deep, we wouldn't be using this. This is a great option though if you're filming at surface on the water and yeah, we love it. As far as troubleshooting with this, one problem that you will see is while you're filming in the water, something happens to the lens as far as it gets splashed a lot of times it will leave water beads. Now there's a couple ways to actually fight that. Um, in Hawaii they would always say stick your earwax, so stick your finger in your ear and rub it all over. I've seen that done. It is effective even though that may sound disgusting. There's also other formulas that you can buy um, as far as for goggles. Another way is just to straight up spit onto the lens, rub it like that and then boom you don't have as bad of raindrops once the rain or the ocean or the water hits it. I've taken this all around the world. I did a video with Bethany Hamilton, soul surfer. They made a big movie about her life. I spent two weeks out there and I was filming everything underwater with this right here. It was a blast. I didn't have any problems with it. Once again, the same thing though. If I let go of the camera in the water with the DSLR in here, this will actually float. So there you have it. That is our tutorial video on filming underwater. I had an awesome experience filming in Hawaii underwater. It was a brand new experience for me. It's definitely a learning curve to it. So don't just think you get the underwater housing, you go in there and you'll get amazing images. It is a trial and error, but just don't make the same error I made that I talked about at the beginning as far as ruining two cameras back to back, two different days. Awful experience. It's worth spending the extra money. If you don't have it, wait. Don't take your camera underwater with a Ziploc bag. It won't end up how you want it to. Maybe it will, but I don't think it will. <laughs> don't do it. Also with this underwater housing is we've actually just filmed so many things outside of underwater where things are hitting the camera such as mud, 
dust and we haven't had any issues as well. So it's also a really great case to protect your camera from mud and other elements that would normally destroy your camera. So with that being said, you have to treat this lens outside of your camera lens like it's a lens. So that's why they actually have this case to cover that lens. But I've actually loaned this out to a friend. He was filming something, brought it back and had a lot of scratches on it. And I found out that once he shot, he just scratched it all off. But the problem with that, if you have like a towel or something, is if you're filming in sand, it's going to leave a lot of scratch marks there. So just be mindful of that. Treat this like it's a lens. Don't just clean it off right away because you're going to have scratches on it if there's other elements on here such as rocks, sand, etc. So you definitely can film in other elements but just be cautious of that. So that is our tutorial on filming underwater. That was a long one so hopefully you all were able to bear through it. I just want to give as much information on the subject as possible. There's a lot more we could actually cover. They have flat ports and dome ports which we'll talk about in a different video. There's pros and cons to both of them. This is my personal preference based on the things that I like to film though. So just keep that in mind. There's a lot of different options out there. Once again, if you're interested in this underwater housing, I'll have a link right here. You can check them out. I'm not paid in any way. I don't benefit by this. I'm just trying to share the information that I've learned so you don't have to go through the headache of losing, ruining your cameras like I have. Thanks so much for watching. As we always say, over and out. Yeah, wham, bam, super tramp. And I tipping up my hat while I boost the fans. And I have a rock top. Can you feel the noise? All the girls scream now because they want the boys. Yo, making all the clouds looking like a big joke when I run so fast and I sing so low. And you never want to mess with me. You're just testing me. I just set me free. So just stop. We cool, we hot, we fresh, and we.